The Six Nations is just around the corner and Rugby Fever is about to hit hard, so let's take a look at how I think the Championship will go. In sixth, I think it will probably be Italy. Now, I think their squad is quite good. They do have a new coach, so it might take some time for Gonzalo Caseda to bed in properly and really get the team that he wants to play and get them playing in the way that he wants them to play. They did have a pretty poor World Cup, like they met expectation probably where they finished, but chipping 90 odd points against New Zealand. I know it's New Zealand, but that's still not a good look and still wasn't great from what's meant to be a tier one nation. Now, I'm not really sure they'll go and win any of these games. They might target that Wales game. They beat them the last time they played in Cardiff, but going to Wales and winning in Cardiff is a big ask for anyone. They do play England and Scotland at home, which they might look at as potentially winnable games, but I don't think they'll win any games in this championship. I hope I'm wrong and they do put up some performances and do potentially get a win, just not against Scotland, but I just don't see it. So I think they'll lose to everyone. In number five, Wales. Now, hang on Wales fans. For these next three, I think they could probably all move about. It's just with the squads having come out and looking at them, they've got the weakest squad out of the next five teams. And I mean, I've seen some people saying that they think their squad on paper looks weaker than Italy's. And that's because they've got a lot of new caps in there or a lot of very low caps, if not new caps. And a lot of their experienced players have either moved on or they're suffering from quite a few injuries from some of their leaders in the squad. It's not a particularly bad squad maybe, but it's just one that probably isn't quite ready to challenge for a championship right now. But maybe in two or three seasons, this Wales team could challenge for a championship again. But you never know how these sort of lesser capped players will react to international rugby and being given this opportunity to become a starter. They could take it with the ground running and go on and beat Scotland in their opening game, or they could absolutely crumble and get smashed in the opening game. It's really hard to tell at this point. But yeah, I did say that lots of people are thinking Italy's squad looks better on paper, but rugby isn't played on paper. And that's why I think they probably will still beat Italy at home, but I don't think they will win any of the other games. They will look at that Scotland game as one they can win because Scotland have a horrific record in Cardiff, but Scotland have been chipping off a lot of these monkeys on their backs. And I think that'll probably be one of them. They did have an okay World Cup. They put in a really good performance against Australia and against Georgia, but some pretty substandard performances against Fiji, even though they did win that game against Portugal, wasn't what you would expect from a tier one nation. And then the capitulation against Argentina. I know the referee changed halfway through, but they just didn't adapt to it. Their World Cup was fine. But I think in this Six Nations, they'll beat Italy and they'll lose to everybody else. Number four, England. Their captain Owen Farrell isn't playing in this championship because of mental health reasons from social media and also from mainstream media as well. And really, for some reason, don't like Owen Farrell. And he's been replaced by Jamie George in this championship, who I will think will probably be a pretty good captain for England. They did have a pretty good World Cup. They got to a semi-final and were really, really close to beating the eventual champion South Africa in that semi-final. But they did struggle in some other games earlier on. They struggled against Fiji in that quarter-final. They struggled against Samoa in the pool stages. But they did get the furthest in the World Cup out of any team. But I think you would expect the other teams in the championship, maybe not Italy, to have gotten that far as well if they had the same run as England did. But their performance against South Africa shouldn't go unnoticed because it was a very, very strong performance from them. Part of the reason why they're in fifth and not third is they play Scotland away from home and they play France away from home, uh, which is two teams that they've not got a great record against recently. Particularly Scotland, they've lost three in a row against Scotland now. And you'd very much expect Scotland to beat them at home. They'll also probably struggle against Ireland at Twickenham now. Ireland don't necessarily have the best record at Twickenham, but they're one of the best teams in the world right now. And England are still rebuilding. Their squad is much younger than it has been in previous years. And it does look like quite a nice squad. And that's kind of the main reason that put them above Wales right now is their squad looks a lot better now than Wales's does right now. It will be very interesting to see how England play and who they pick in some key positions like number 10. There's three players in there who are looking pretty good in Marcus Smith, Finn Smith and George Ford. But I think England will beat Wales and Italy and lose to Scotland, France and Ireland. And if you think you can predict the tournament better than I can, why not join my Super Brew Predictor League by clicking the link in the description and the pinned comment or by searching for the league Connor Does Rugby 6 Cent Predictor in the Super Brew app and using code DIVETREE to join. In third, Scotland. I see Scotland really targeting that game in Cardiff. I think man for man, this Scotland squad is 
much better than the Wales squad right now. But they do have that monkey on their back of having not won in Cardiff since 2002. They have won in Wales since then. They did beat Wales at Parker Scarlets in 2020 uh, when they finished off the 2020 championship um, in the autumn. So they have won in Wales recently, but they haven't won in Cardiff for 22 years. I was three years old when that happened. F me. It was kind of close the last time Scotland went there and I could definitely see Wales winning this game. I'm going with my gut on this one for the Cardiff game. I didn't go with that last year when Scotland beat England at Twickenham. I said they'd lose. That was actually the only result I got wrong in the last Six Nations. There have been a lot of firsts since for Scotland recently and I think going down and winning in Cardiff is going to be another one this year. They should be England at home in their third game. Um, they've got the number on England and I think Scotland squad is better than them and I think it'll be a massive failure for Scotland if they don't beat England at Murrayfield. Now the France game is a bit more interesting. I think France will probably win this but it's one that the Scotland team will probably go into thinking they can win it. Between France and Scotland normally the home teams won in recent years and they've been pretty competitive fixtures. The last three times they've played, not in the Six Nations, but the last three times they've played uh, was the two in the summer and one in the Six Nations and all the games were pretty tight and pretty good contests as well. So I think we should expect some high scoring affair here. I think France will probably just come out on top in that one. And they should go to Italy and win, but I think they will struggle in Dublin. I don't think Scotland will get a win in Ireland this year. And with the squad announcements, we haven't been spared the Tuni Tombola this year. With them picking the likes of Hepburn, who has six caps for England, and young Harry Patterson, who's only played nine professional rugby matches for Edinburgh in his career. The Scotland team's kind of weird because they probably have the capability to win those first four games but they also very much have the capability to lose all those first four games. So that's why I've gone with, I think they'll beat Wales, England and Italy, but will lose to France and Ireland. In second, I've gone with Ireland. Now obviously they'll be very disappointed after their World Cup exit and they don't have Johnny Sexton for them at 10 anymore, which has been a problem for them in the past when he hasn't played, but Crowley has looked really good this season for Munster. And so we'll need to see if he can fit into the system right, but I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt for that right now. It's a very experienced squad. They don't have any new caps in the main squad. They have their training panelists or something like that, um, where you see players like Sam Prendergast coming along. But the main squad for the Six Nations have all played international rugby. They should beat pretty much everybody but the france ireland game is very similar to the scotland france game where the home team tends to win so i think that's what's going to go against them in this championship where france will beat ireland in that opening game in marseille not paris like i might have said in a previous video so i think they will lose to france and beat wales scotland england and italy and that only means in first place i have gone with france and if you're playing along at home you might have seen, I'm saying they're going to win a Grand Slam. Now, I didn't think that would happen until I just went through the games myself, but that's just the conclusion that I came to after that, is they're going to win every game. And I know they are missing their main halfback partnership in Anton Dupont and Roman Intimat, but they will be playing with Luku and Jalibert and 910, most likely, who are the Bordeaux halfback partnership. And they've been on fire this season. I think they're sitting second in the top 14 at the time of recording and are top of the Champions Cup pool at the time of recording as well. There's still one more round for that to go for me. But the lack of Dupont and Intimac is probably a slight worry which could make those games against Scotland and against Ireland a bit more tricky. But I think they've got enough about them to get through that. So I think France will beat everyone and be Grand Slam champions again this year. There's a lot to know about this championship that I haven't expressed here, so if you want to find out everything you need to know before the 2024 Six Nations kicks off, check out this video right here. Thanks for watching.